All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to class. Thank you very, very much for showing up. Let's get things started. It's our last night of team presentations, and we're going to start things off tonight with Team California. Team California, are you here? Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. Who on Team California will be presenting your slides tonight? I believe it is me, Cameron. Cameron, fantastic. Cameron, you'll notice in the upper right-hand corner, you've got a little rectangle with an arrow in it. You can go ahead and click on that. Okay. Let's see. I wonder if this is, let me make sure this is the most oh, recent. Looks like it's doing it. Up oh, the donut shop. Fantastic. And Cameron, who on your team is going to be starting us off tonight? Uh, I believe uh, Caitlin will be starting. Fantastic. Uh, I think it's actually. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Stephen. I'm the, I'm the oh, user. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, Stephen, take it away. All right. So we are Team California. My name is Stephen. We also have Cameron, Ricardo, Eric, and Caitlin. And today we're going to talk about the donut shop. All right. So we are Creamy Chris Donuts. Uh, we have a vast selection of some of your favorite donuts. Our selection is expanding as we have a new line of kale donuts, because who doesn't like kale? Um, <laughs> so with this historic expansion comes new challenges, and we'd like to create software to help us meet those challenges. So this new software is kind of going to be like a mini database, if you will. So it's going to kind of keep track of our sales, our kale supply, uh, donut inventory, and order efficiency. I'm Caitlin. Um, I'm going to be the user scribe. So when the team and I sat down with Steven, we asked him a couple of questions about what he want us, wanted us to do with this database. So one of um, the questions are how much kale is currently in each step and how long has it been there? How many donuts per hour they can expect to be made? and how many of each type they sell and what time they are sold and what kind of orders are being are people placing and are they ordering just one kill donut or are they ordering ordering a whole box all right yep. and then to answer those questions so we have about one pound of kale in each step and we have a total of 10 steps so add that up you got 10 pounds of kale uh kale can only last two days so the time in, in between our steps are going to be very minimal uh in order to provide the freshest product to our customers uh, we average around 150 donuts per hour, and we estimated about 50% is only for one kale donut, as these are kind of our new customers that were for the first time. Uh, the other half we estimate are your own customers, so you know the ones that have already bought the kale uh, and enjoyed it, so they're going to get a whole box. And as far as like flavors. Um, for the orders, they vary. Uh, most popular though is gonna be kind of traditional chocolate, vanilla, uh, and also brownie batter is very popular. So the list re of requirements that Steven asked us to do was to create a database that provides information regarding the kale donut sales, including type of donut, time it was sold, and items per transaction, and then also create a kale supply tracker mon monitoring the stock of kale and when it reaches 1.25 tons and notifying us to order more kale and then creating a donut supply counter allowing us to be able to see the amount of donuts produced per hour and then creating a random function that help us decide on a supplier if the price and delivery time are the same for both suppliers. And then uh, while we were uh, talking to Stephen, we asked him if he could fill out this chart so we could have a visual and sample sample data to refer to when we start building the software. We wanted to see how many donuts were sold within a month and if any of the donuts had a popular time window throughout the day. Hello, my name is Eric and I was a task grab. Um, 
I got with the user scribe, story scribe, so I can make a list of things that I have to make to give to um, the tester. So basically first, we essentially wanted to create a program that helps track and assist applying the 10 steps. Uh, we also want to make a program that um, creates an inventory and database so we can identify each donor and each its status. Uh, we also need a system within that program to have a timer to let us know how fresh the donuts are. Also, the program must also record the sales data and should tell us how well each donut flavor is selling so that we can use our resources more efficiently. Also, when supply drops to a certain amount, for example, 1.25 tons, we need a user to be reminded to order more, like a notification um, program. And the program should record how many donuts are made an hour and cap it off about 150 at max so people can know to stop making new ones. Um, I, after um, I made that, I got with the tester and I'm mean, not the tester, I got with Cameron, we made a, uh, effort estimates and iterations to give to each person so we can know how much is going to be for each um, step. So for the first step, the program will need the first a reliable database so we can um, implement the ac um, adequate data analysis and properly assess to automate inventory changes and retrieve appropriate trends. And after that, the database is created the internal program will need to be made and automatically start a timer once the kill has been made to confirm the database, confirming to the database. And once that timer is up, the program must notify user. After that, a separate program needs to be created that records sales data based on the flavors inputted into the database. A graphical illustration would be created, preferably a bar graph, to display the correct data and trends. The program should also offer the job assistance, like tracking how much donuts are being made up to 150 an hour. So there should be a user input to easily allow tracking to see how many donuts are being made. Kale donuts should have specialty marks. So specifically because kale donuts um, probably will last probably two days. So we need to have like some type of marking on it to make sure that um, it could be easily tracked. So we won't, um, you know, so we can have that organized. Also, the program will need to be made our program will need to be made probably like a boolean or something similar to that to flip a coin when supplies are low so we can um have a better way of choosing the supplier hi i'm cameron the uh, coordinator so i took the information that eric the uh um task scribe or yeah the task scribe gave to me and broke it down into its basic um phases for creation um Generally speaking, our users' main needs can be broken down into three major segments, the database, the product tracker, and sales analysis. Each segment has individual features, which would need to be built on bottom up. We then broke segments down into simple sections and focused on basic user needs and then read between the lines and added features as indicated by the uh, user story scribe and the task scribe. So generally speaking, our first version is going to do just the very basic functionality that the user needs. We're gonna focus entirely on kale. So we're going to have basic file read write for the database. Uh, we're gonna use that database info to determine how much kale we're using and then when we need to reorder. And then we're gonna analyze specifically kale donut sales. The second version is going to be the complete version of that. That will include proper data tabulation and then an automatic ingredient reorder, including the randomization of suppliers where necessary. And then we expand out into general sales categories for tracking the other important donut types that our user uh, told us they want to track. Then in our V3, we're adding in additional um, uh, features that the user didn't necessarily specifically ask for, but will probably want to have, including proper data sorting for the database, additional information about product orders and amounts, and then a proper POS system for hourly totals, labor, ingredients, and sales. And then finally, these are extra, extra details that the user doesn't necessarily need, including data exportation for Office files, and lastly, additional analysis and database entry 
for sales. This would include the uh, bar graph, line graph uh, drawing for um, the data that we generate through our sales analysis. Hi, I'm Ricardo. I'm the tester. My job is to find any bugs and performance issues with the pro program that we created. So what would be tested? We will be testing if the program satisfies all the requirements. The things I would be looking to test is if the program is easy to use to, to anybody. Checking if the current database is correct, a timer for the kill that's being used, a kill supply tracker functions is tracking each donut, the sales records, the program is notif notifies of low supply, the donut supply counter function, and the coin flip program when a resupply is needed. All function needs to be in working order before the final release, meaning the program is given the expected output. We also be checking if the current version of the program offers the least amount of waste because that's information the company wants to know and need and needs. When it would be tested? After a version of the program is completed, testing will proceed and reported. A simulation will be used to test the program in real time. We also be using the historical data from the previous cells. I will then discuss the report to the development team by my findings, continue the process to the final release. So that's all I have for my part. Do you have any questions? Very good job, guys. You did an excellent job. So, um, guys, do a good job of basically triggering when the uh, kale supply gets low down to what 1.25 tons and stuff like that. So that's good. But quick question for you: Do you think you have enough data that you could sort of track how fast the kale's being used, sort of like kale per hour or something like that? Where you know, I don't know how long it takes to order new kale or something like that. But if it took a while, it took them a while to deliver it or something like that. Do you think you could sort of track how it how it gets used up hour by hour, basically? And maybe if you had to order it like two two tons or something like that, you could actually take action earlier. Uh, I think by version three of our program, we should be very capable of determining how much uh, kale is being used in any given hour or even any given day, and then have an our automatic ingredient reorder system trigger earlier uh, than before 1.25 to make sure that we always have enough kale. All right, so that would be at least a possibility for a future, a future feature, basically, right? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Excellent, guys. You did a very good job. Congratulations. All right, let's move on to our next uh, team. Professor. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, could uh, Team Oregon present next? Oh, okay. Twist my arm. Sure. Okay, Team Oregon, you're up. All right. So I'm going to share my screen. And we can have Team California stop sharing. Hello, can everybody hear me? Yes. Perfect. Hang on. Oh, there we go. Excellent. Team California did a good job of stopping sharing. Now we just need Team Oregon to start sharing. Can oh. everyone see my screen? Hold on. Yes, Team Oregon, the phone wash, correct? Yes. Excellent. Go for it. Um. All right. My turn. Hello, I am Mirosov Mitsou, and I am the user for Team Oregon. As a potential user of this program for this scenario, I imagine myself to being either the business owner, the employee, or the customer. And uh, for this scenario, I worked alongside my team to design and create a program that will be the function of a phone cleaning system, or a program that's more like a routine to a daily day system to manage phones. The program for the business of cleaning the phone is a routine with different cleaning types with three different various types of cleanings that we offer. But the various functions that offers for the staff to work to change the status of a phone when it is being cleaned. As an employee, I would need the ability to look for a phone in the program and change its state in order to take it out of the system when it's cleaned and to also notify the user. Um, and this program will need to be versatile enough, versatile enough for maybe extra cases where a person has like a cracked phone and needs to be taken more care of. And the, the, the program should be able to handle the daily work of the phone cleaning service. Who's next? All right, can you hear me? We can hear you. Who are you? Just I'm just gonna move on. I was assigned to the user story scribe. Uh, and as a user story scribe, I had to get together a set of requirements and uh, get any questions that the team had for the user and find answers to that. So let's see. Uh, the major features of the program we need to have was to be able to create, view, and update the phones as they are in the queue to be cleaned. 
Uh, we have an alert to the customer uh, on each status update. Every time they move from one part being cleaned to the next part. Uh, we also had this an alert when the phone is fully cleaned. And then uh, we also needed a function where uh, we could send an alert to everybody who had had their phone cleaned six days ago to let them know it's time for them to come back and get cleaned again. Um, I have on here some of the requirements we needed for data. Uh, so the pro needed to take in the customer name, phone number, what type of phone it was, and what service they selected. Uh, we also, in order to uh, support that function of calling them back in to get cleaned again, we need to also record that somewhere so that uh, with that customer data and the date it was cleaned on so that we can send an uh, alert after six days. Uh, and I also have here some uh, the exact what the services are exactly. Because some of them here have a five minute drying time and then the complete one, they also have an additional 10 minute drying time. Uh, it's as well as the antimicrobial coating. Uh, next slide. Uh, some questions that our team had for the user. The very first one was what happens if the phone's cracked? And uh, the, the decided the business rule was going to be that we deny service on uh, damaged phones. Um, we wanted to know, well, who's going to be using this app? And it's going to be for the employees inside the store to use. Uh, they asked if uh, are we going to be cleaning the phones like a bunch of them at once and do the batch. Uh, not currently, but maybe in the future. Like have an entire tray of phones to work on at once. Uh, and then another the question was how, how is the employee going to be tracking of this, the phones that they are being cleaned? Um, and the phone was going to be placed into a plastic bag and that bag was going to have uh, a label with all the data that they'll have to enter in later. Um, and then we asked, well, what are the uh, actual statuses? What are those messages going to be sent out to the user? Uh, so we have a message that says it started clean. Uh, it's disinfecting. It's drying. It's protecting. It's final drying and uh, your phone is ready when it's finally done. Uh, one big question I had was, what is this application actually going to look like and how is it going to run? And uh, at the time, we were under the impression that this homework was like all the other ones where we could only use uh, what had been taught in class. So that moved us a lot there. So we had to pick a command line like we've been uh, programming and uh, we just imagined it as something where you could type in a command for uh, to send the reminder alerts, a command to uh, change what step on the cleaning process a certain phone is, and then a, just a command to close the program. Hi, my name is Connell Merch and I am the task scribe. In order to fulfill the requirements set forth by the user and user story scribe, I've come up with this data structure and logic flow that would be used to create the program. We start with the work order data structure that holds the information such as the customer's name, the phone number, the type of service, basic plus or complete, cleaning stage, and the cl if the cleaning is done. Next, we create an array of this work order type that will be the size of the maximum number of phones that the shop can handle at any given time. Finally, in order to keep track of which spots in the array are open and ready to use, we will create an int array of some kind of some of the same size that will hold the indexes of the open spots in the work order array. Next comes user input. There are four main functions that we that can be called based on the input of based on the input, add order, increment phase, send reminder, and quit. When the employee adds an order, the customer inputs their information, including the service that they want, their name, type of phone, and their phone number. The program will store that information in the first available spot in the work order array. Then the program goes back to waiting for the user input. 
The next function is to increment the cleaning phase of the specific phone when the employee is done with that phase. The employee will specify which work order they want to increment and based on the service of the, cus the service of the customer selected and the phase that the phone is on, the program will send it the appropriate message to the customer with the number stored in that work order. After the phase is incre incremented, it checks to see if the work order is complete. If it is, it will record the client data in a data file, send the client the cleaning completed message and the germ-free guarantee if they got the antibacterial coating uh, option and remove the customer's data from the work order array. If not, it will go back to waiting for input. If there are no available spots in the array when we're such as we're at maximum capacity for the shop, an error will be returned when attempting to uh, add a phone to the array. The next function is sending the six day reminder. If the employee enters this command, the program will scan the file that customer data is stored in when cleaning is complete and finds all entries that are six days or old. It will collect the phone numbers for these entries and send the automated message advising them that they should come in for another cleaning. And the final function is to quit the program. Hi, no. Hello, my name is Camille and I'm the coordinator. Um, so I worked with the task scribe to find out um, the different phases and what we wanted to do. So for phase one, um, we want to do what the user would start out with. Um, phase two would be what is added and expanded on. Um, and then phase three was the last update till it is complete. Um, so phase one, we wanted to have the customer file, which would be just their name and their contact info and anything else that needs to be in there. Um, we want the plastic labeling to show whose phone is being washed. Um, and then we want to wash only one phone at a time for the phase one. Um, so we also started with this, um, started with the classic wash, which is just the fiber cloth wiped down um, and then the Lysol washed and then dried. And then that would be only be $10. And then we want to um, have in phase one, the sending of the alerts throughout the cleaning phase. So phase two, we want the customer file to be added because we wanted to add the um, plus service, which is just the phone and the phone case being washed would be $10. And so for the customer file, including the name and contact, we wanted to add the cleaning type, um, whether it be the classic or the plus service and the washing of the three phones instead of one. And then for phase three, we wanted to add two more phones. So washing five phones at a time and adding the complete surface which is the plus service with additional coding and which would be $30. All right, my name is Alejandro Mendez and I'm the tester. So following as the coordinator said, we're gonna have three phases for testing. The first phase, uh, we're gonna enter 20 different orders at the same time, but we're only gonna do one order at a time. And while doing that, we're also gonna calculate how long each order takes and at the end of the, all of that, we're going to check if the text is sent correctly. And on phase two, instead of doing only one order at a time, we're going to do three orders of time with those 20 orders. And we're going to check the same things as in phase one. We're going to do the calculate how long the order takes, check if the text is sent correctly, but everything doing three orders at the same time. And then phase three, uh, before starting phase three, we're going to retest phase one and phase two to make sure phase two didn't break anything. And we're going to do 20 orders, but instead of doing three phones at one time, we're going to do five phones at one time. And we're still going to check on all the same things. We're going to calculate how long it takes and check if the texts are sent correctly. And other thing that we could test for is for uh, user error. Sorry, there's a typo there. Um, the customer would have to give their number and phone number to communicate with them. And if the phone number, for example, they give us a phone number and only has nine digits or has 11 digits, um, the customer will be asked to retype the phone number. Uh, simple if loop and whatnot. If the employee moves to the next step by mistake, the program will ask the employee to confirm their action. So let's say uh, they finish with the microfiber clean and want to go to the drying, but they didn't mean to do that. They get a chance to go back and fix that. Um, what happens if you change the phase of the wrong phone? Have an option to go back and fix a user mistake. This is in case. This is when we're uh, cleaning multiple phones at the same time. You might, uh, the, the user might, uh, sorry, not the user, the employee might get confused and 
change the phase of the wrong phone, he's going to have the option to go back and refix whatever he did. And what happens if you try to edit the wrong index? For example, if an index with not, that has nothing in it, the problem will let you know that the index is empty and it makes an enter a non-empty index. And that is it. Thank you. Excellent, guys. You did a very, very good job. So I noticed you guys said at the beginning that uh, you're not going to accept any uh, broken phones. Well, you know, everybody's phone's broken a little bit, right? I mean, do you think you could, you know, uh, maybe handle some broken phones? I mean, we're not talking like if somebody backed a car over it or something like that, but, you know, like a little crack in the screen probably wouldn't do anything as far as your service, right? So um, me and Connell were talking about this, and we, we kind of came to the conclusion if the, if the phone is broken enough so that while cleaning it, we could break it completely, you know, uh -huh. uh, we, we wouldn't take it. We haven't decided on what what is broken enough so we just decided with no broken so like if you see like a big uh crack on the on the phone and while cleaning it it gets like water gets inside the crack and the phone breaks then we don't want to be liable for that i got you all right so you're playing it safe basically is what you're saying yes okay i can live with that all right cool excellent guys you did a great job thank you very much for the presentation we will now move on to our next presenting team and it will be team nevada Are you here, Team Nevada? Hello? Yep. Hello, hello. hello. Hi, we can hear you. Awesome. Who will be presenting your slides, Team Nevada? Who would be presenting? I guess I will. <laughs> and you are? Hi, uh, my name is Peter LaFaretta. I am the coordinator. Fantastic, Peter. So you know there's the little rectangle with the arrow in the upper right hand corner. You got to click on that. Yes, sir. Thanks. Paul Pounds. All right. Fabulous. Sir. And who will be going first on your team, Peter? Uh, that's me, Zach Kravetsky. All right. Zach, take it away. All right. Um, so we are uh, Paul Pounds. Uh, I will be the, the user. Um, so basically, the program uh, that needs to be created is... Um, one where the employees can enter information about uh, pets being brought into the pound. Um, well, first of all, I guess the company is um, a weight loss program for pets. So um, people will bring in their pets and we have like exercise program and food programs. Uh, so the, the program's gonna need to take in some points of information from the user. Um, such as the name, customer name, uh, the pet name, the address, phone number, a uh, whole bunch of stuff about the vet, vet phone number, um, all that type of stuff in case, you know, anything happens to the pet, we want to know, you know, like the vet uh, information and who to contact for that. Um, also, uh, each time the pet is brought in, um, the program needs to capture the weight, the current weight of the pet. Um, so that we know um, the current weight and then also the goal weight for the pet. Um, from there, we get the information of how long um, the customer would want their pet in the program. So like how intense or rigorous, I guess, the weight loss program is. So the more weight they need to lose and less amount of time, uh, the more rigorous the training will be. Um, so there's a few different types of uh, meal programs that we offer. Um, it's the amount of food, how much food, uh, how much food each time we give them food. Um, and then we also have exercise programs, which consist of walks, fetch sessions, um, treadmill walking, and swimming. Um, each time the pet is brought in, the weight needs to be documented so we can see the overall weight loss journey of the pet. Um, also, how much food and stuff they're eating outside of the, um, the weight loss program and stuff so we can document that and make sure we have all the information uh, so that we can address that whenever the pet's brought in. Um, also, as kind of like a success story, we'd like to um, display the pets in a list of 
like how much weight they've lost. Um, so like it t displays like their um, their starting weight and then how much weight they've lost in their current weight. Uh, and that's all for the user. Generally, we'd move on to your user story scribe now. But only if you want to. Seems like he's having a problem with his mic right now. Uh, can you just give us one moment? No problems. We're just chilling. Should we skip to the next person and then circle back and pick up your user story scribe? Would that work? Uh, yeah, I think that would be a great idea. <laughs> Which would probably be your task scribe. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, and our task scribe is, is he here too? Or yeah, can you hear me? Ah, there we go. Yep, we can hear you. Who is this? Uh, this is Nick. All right, Nick, take it away, man. All right, so I was talking with the user story scribe and we decided that the we should make a GUI interface for our program and it would be developed by using an API. And we would have it so that each display is based on the icon that is interacted with in the GUI. So if the user clicked one icon, it would display other results, et cetera, et cetera. And the first icon would be inputting and editing the specific information of the pet. So like its weight, what kind of breed it is, et cetera, and other relevant information like when it was born and how old it is and things like that. The second icon's information would be based on a given pet's weight and then how far they are in their weight program. And so then the meals would be curated to each pet. So the information and results displayed will be based on an algorithm. Um, certain variables that would be part of this algorithm would include like the weight of ingredients, what kind of ingredients are in each meal, and the meals would be displayed based on the given day. And the total calorie intake would be based on all of the meals. And if this would all be curated towards the pet's weight and how far they are along in their weight program. The third icon's information would calculate how many calories a given pet needs to burn based on their current weight. Therefore, the user would ask would be asked to input specific information based on the exercises that their pet has done. So when they want to input or update their weight program, they would say, you know, if their pet ran and for how long, things like that. So, um, It'd be how long it was done for and how much of like a weight loss or how many calories were actually burned. The calories that were displayed would be based on this user's input and then after the program or this would be after the program adjust the pet's needs based on what the user put. And the leaderboard system would be a simple list of proportional goals. So at the top it would show like the highest percentage of like a pet's or how close a pet would be towards its actual weight program. And then it would compare the current weight to the goal. Wait, and that's how the percentage would uh, come up and it would show a descending list of percentages with the closest goals being at the top like I just said and the pet weights would consistently be updated in the database to make sure that the displayed information is as current as possible. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Peter Laparetta and I was the coordinator in this program of the uh, Paw Pounds Patrol. Uh, so I decided to uh, set them up in phases because since we're essentially working on an app, we can uh, you know, uh, we have three features uh, managed out. So 
phase zero, we're going into the initial alpha of the program. The whole skeleton is shown, how the app looks, uh, how the GUI looks, things like that, grayed out icons and uh, white space for future use. The first feature of the data of the pets is implemented. All the information of the pet can be inserted, uh, the vet name, the uh, name of the pet, the breed of the pet, the, the weight value of the pet, and the program would keep it registered in its personal database. Phase one starts the beta stages of the program, featuring a more colorful splash page, you know, just to have something nice to look at so far. The icons are all available and have the basic features, but the, this phase will focus on the food and weight management feature, which is the big, uh, the big, the big feature about it. The food program stores the set pet weight and the target weight, and it administers a generic meal, uh, a cheap, regular, or gourmet, and records the calories and the nutrition to store in the database. The program runs basic mathematics, and the weight algorithm is introduced to keep the track of the uh, calories eaten. For this phase, only one of the two meals will be tracked, since we're doing uh, two meals, along with just the short duration to be sure the program is updating its database effectively. Phase two is where the exercise feature will be implemented and basically prioritized. The feature would ask for the type of activity used in the prime, as the primary exercise of the day and use that already set uh, pet weight and target weight to set the recommended time and intensity needed for the pet to reach that target loss. Only walking and swimming will be used in this phase for now since those require just, you know, basic kilometers or basic, uh, basic steps. Phase three will implement more work into these food and exercise programs. The meal plan will be upgraded to include actual brand food like IMs or uh, what else is another one? Um, I don't have a dog, so I can't really figure that one out. Uh, I would use the algorithms to automate the entry for the nutrition details and calories. So it would already have it in. All you would have to do is just put what type of, uh, what type of food the dog is eating and everything will show up. The exercise plan will incorporate more activities, suggest, even suggested for the type of pet, like uh, say if you have a German Shepherd, it would be better at running, or uh, if you have a cockatiel, it would be better as a, a, a training exercise or something like that. Phase four is general cleanup, stylizing the program for the company, make sure it looks good, make sure the employees can access everything. And the leaderboard system would be implemented near the end to advertise the varying degrees of success in the weight management program. And now I'm going to hand it over to our tester. All right. Hello, my name is Jay Kim and my role is the tester. In phase zero, we make sure that the program viewers is lender correctly. We also test the input fields and the database to make sure that when the user inputs the information, it gets properly stored in the database. In phase one, we test the program's pace navigation to make sure the views change properly. We also test the pet meals plan functionality in a similar fashion to the customer and pet information table. Ensuring that the entry properly gets stored in databases and that the user can edit it later if needed. We check the weight tracking algorithm that is used to update the pet required calories to ensure it works properly as well. Phase two, we only test the functionality of the exercise plan features using the same method as the pet meal plan, customer informational ta information tables. Phase three requires the retesting of the pet meal and exercise plan tables, ensuring that they properly work for the additional options that the user can select real actual pet food options and more pet exercises. Since real food is being used now, we also test the algorithm for automating the nutrition facts of the food option for pets. Phase four, all features of the application are double checked for any bugs, and we test the leaderboard sorting algorithm and the leaderboard display when it is properly implemented. Thanks everyone for, everyone for listening to our presentation. Hey, can you guys hear me? Hello? Anybody? Yes. Is this is this the other Zach? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, luckily I uh, I make music and I was able to get a uh, what is it an extra microphone from upstairs. That's pretty that actually, impressive. Not that bad. That actually you works. So. Fantastic, sir. So tell us what the user story scribe did about did on this project, sir. Uh, 
Okay, so what my job was was to essentially take like the user's um, like story, like what he wanted, and create like an exhaustive list of things and like set up a foundation for the app itself, right? And uh, yeah, so there's a lot of components that go into like making like a complete app according to what the user wants. Like the first thing I figured we would need was uh, what is it, a GUI written like in like C that relies on an SQL database to store and keep the data secure. Um, so like, you know, like most apps tend to have uh, like a really pretty like graphical user interface. And uh, we, you know, we wanted to achieve something similar to that. So we figured, uh, what is the GUI? We'll have a menu at the top of three different icons for the different data that the app is supposed to display. I'm thinking like something, uh, what is it that's like, what is it designed that you can what does it select? You can select from and just overall like really care about like the general aesthetics of the like app and the way it looks as well as the functionality behind it. So uh, I say the first icon would correspond to the specific customers like inputted information. So it's like an informative tab. The second um, relates to the food program, displays information regarding that. And then the final shows the exercise program. So it's like three main like icons essentially in the uh, GUI. So um, yeah, so uh, I guess like specific details behind it is that, uh, you know, the first tab is going to be storing the pet's name, customer's name, customer's address, phone number, the type of pet. And then, like there's a list of different subcategories for that, like dog, cat, bird, rabbits, gerbils, hamsters, ferrets, and others. It shows the customer's name, the customer's phone number, the weight of the pet, the target weight, and then uh, it also shows the desired duration of a pet's stay. And um, of course, you want to be able to update that at any time if, uh, what is it, the patient decides to change. And uh, the second icon manages the food program. Something really important that I realized because like I've personally looked into like nutrition in the past because it's something that like interests me a lot and uh, that I care for like when I'm going to the gym and whatnot. Uh, essentially, in uh, something that's really important is if you want the dogs to continue losing or the pets to continue losing weight on a consistent basis, then you actually have to make sure that you adjust the caloric intake. Uh, that they have and their nutrition based off of their new weight otherwise weight weight loss will actually stagnate so um, I came up with a general formula for um, like how much we should be feeding each given pet and I just kind of assumed that it would be similar to uh, human bi biology in that regard that it'd be like five times their uh, like what you do is like you take the calories and you multiply five times their current total body weight in pounds and then there's, I believe, two mils for um, that follow that formula that you give the pets a day. And uh, because it's going to be less than uh, their typical caloric like intake, odds are they're going to be finishing all the food because they're going to be hungry. And they're going to continue losing weight at a um, was it consistent basis, which is one of the most important things behind the app. And then uh, finally... I say that the third icon will keep track of the exercise program. The um, different exercises in this category are walks, fetch sessions, treadmill, and swimming. And uh, it, this tab displays, what is it, like how many calories a pet should be aiming to burn each day, as well as like all the different like exercises that uh, are involved in the program. And then I'd say um, the very last thing that's uh, necessary within the application and the uh, GUI is at the top. There has to be a, uh, was a big red button that has like a leaderboard that displays, um, was it all of the different uh, like pets that are like currently in the program. And I guess this like helps to keep the uh, different pets motivated or like the owners in order to, uh, I guess, show them their progress compared to others. And, uh, I guess somewhat add a competitive side to this, maybe just to um, was it inspire, was it the pets to lose a little bit more weight, and then uh, yeah, it, it's also important that the system is percentage based because 
if you're basing this off of like how many pounds that a given animal is losing, it's pretty obvious a really obese dog is going to lose a lot more weight than like a chunky kitten. So uh, you have to uh, account for that. So like the percentage of a total body weight lost rather than just pure pounds, because in that case, it'd always be the fattest animal that's at the top of a leaderboard. And yeah, that's a presentation. Excellent, guys. Very, very good job. So uh, good job. Uh, you know, if you've ever seen a dog, you know that you know there are certain breeds and stuff like that that have like a lot of hair. So, you know, if I took my dog to like the groomer and got all the hair cut off, you know, the dog's weight's going to go down just because of that. Is there any way that your program could like account for dramatic weight loss that had nothing to do with your program? That's actually a... Uh... That's actually a good idea that I personally, uh, what is it? Uh, I guess I didn't think of originally, but what I would say would be a good means of doing that would be rather than just weighing based off of simple body weight, you actually, um, what is it? Use something like a DEXA scanner. It would be expensive, but um, you would actually be able to tell like how much body fat, like the body fat composition of the pet as opposed to just like, the pure weight that could change based on any given factors like hair loss or uh, like water weight. I feel like so, knowing a, a specific amount of the breed of the uh, uh, type of pet we have would probably help as well. So like uh, if you would have like a, a breed of dog that normally tends like a lot of has like a lot of hair or a lot of fur, you would probably uh, try attempt to uh, try and put that in into the system that, oh, you know, uh, a certain amount of pounds could be lost depending on the uh yeah the hair loss something like that gotcha all right no that works out you just gotta think about it otherwise woohoo! look at that <laughs> we dropped 10 pounds like oh wait oh they just got a haircut all right cool you did a very good job guys thank you very much greatly appreciate that we will now move on to our last team to present tonight and our last team who has to present it's going to be team colorado team colorado are you here Yeah, hello. Yeah, hello. We can hear you. Hey, who's going to be presenting from your team? Um, it should be Cornell. All right. So, Cornell, you got a rectangle in the upper right-hand corner and arrow going into it. If you're here, if so, you should go ahead and click on it and share your slides with us. Which will just turn out to be awkward and embarrassing if Cornell's not here, of course. Or, you know, I might be the only one here. You could be. Do you have the ability to share your slides? I can. I can see that they're viewing them. <laughs> you got a shy team. Oh, that's so sad. Okay. I thought it was um Arjun that was going to show the oh, slides. Yeah, he said he was going to. Oh, sorry. Then he has to speak up and say he's going to do it. Yo, Arjun, you there? Well, apparently he's gone off with Cornell. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but we have the two of you, right? I guess. Uh, I'll <laughs> pull it up. <laughs> All right, let me, I've got the script up. I'll go get the PowerPoint. All right, go for it. Oh, all right. You know, it's interesting because uh, Arjun seems to be here. Cornell does not seem to be here, but Arjun oh, is yeah. here. So why would Arjun not be speaking up? And Arjun's not even muted. Huh, go figure. All right. Hello. So, yes. Uh -huh. Who's speaking? Uh, this is Cornell. 
Cornell, thank God. Finally, we were looking all over for you. Cornell, are you our user? Yes. Take it away, big boy. Hello. So our product is the Food Chucker 2.0. It is a, a solution for safely getting food from a restaurant to a driver in their vehicle uh, to take consideration during COVID. Um, the program has a few requirements. It must be notified that the driver has arrived and a driver's car must be tied to their profile. The program will also need to detect when the window has rolled down and then the, um, the food chucker will begin to send the order to the driver. So the way that the food chucker works is that it launches food towards the vehicle and there are three speeds that the launcher can launch at. So it launches soups at a careful speed and a gentle speed for chicken nuggets and then a solid speed for burgers. And so once the uh, program detects that the window is rolled down, it will ask the driver if they are ready to receive their order. And then the driver will have 30 seconds to say whether or not they are ready. And there are some additional requirements. Um, so as the driver, they um they need to be made aware of the speed of the bag that they're about to receive. So they should know if they're about to have a um like a burger launched at them or if they need to be prepared to catch a soup. Um the program should also take in consideration the weather, and the program should also know like which spot the driver is parked in. And there are also concerns for the um, restaurant. So there should be a weight limit for each bag and the restaurant should be made aware of the weight limit and keep that in mind. And the restaurant should also keep in mind the size of the bag that's going to be launched. Um, the size of the bag that can fit through the window so that they're not trying to send in too much into like a small car. And there's one more thing I forgot to mention is that an employee will be sent out if a um, if the driver is unable to receive the order normally. Um, the employee will come to bring the uh, food to the vehicle, and the employee will also be sent out if um, there's just no response from the driver um, after a while in case like the driver left. Now on to the um, story scribe. And who will the user story scribe be? I believe that's Vanessa. Well, we heard her earlier, so we know she's here. Oh, Vanessa, did you mute yourself? Oh, she's still here, so this is good. She's not muted, so that's even better. She may have left the building, but that's a separate issue. So no problem. So uh, Vanessa is your <laughs> use, user story scribe, correct? Yes. If we can't get in touch with her right now, which is perfectly okay, who's your task scribe? That would be me, John. John, maybe we just move to you and we'll circle back and get Vanessa on the flip side. How about that? That's fine by me. Of course, whoever's in charge of the uh, slides has to sort of like move them up. So. No, they got it. They got yeah. it. I was just waiting on them. Um, so this was a um, pretty simple, really. We were just tasked with how to get the food into the vehicles, pretty much. So it was basically just 
aiming and uh, kind of like voice recognition for when drivers pulled up so you would know that they're there or some type of scanning system. Um, so basically what I did here was I just made like simple basic steps to go through how it would work. And um, so to begin with, our scanners would identify if there's a lane occupied. We only had two lanes and we only had uh, one launcher per lane. So there was no need to aim uh, between lanes, for instance. If we had like four, there's not one launcher that has to change between each lane. It's just, you know, there would be four launchers, one for each uh, each lane. So basically, the scanners would identify if it's occupied. Then it would go through and scan if the window is down. And uh, then uh, if it was determined that the windows weren't down, it would turn the speakers up louder and ask them for an order number or send out a person to actually like knock on the window and get them to, you know, reply in some way. And then after that, we just do voice recognition would pick up the order number from the the driver, followed by scan in from the order number into the system, which would just determine what needs to be, uh, what order needs to be prepared and everything, um, which would then be handled by an actual employee. So instead of making a system to bag everything as well, we decided that it would probably be better that employees handled the bagging. That way uh, they could actually put physical labels on everything and put them in the proper packaging for, you know, soups had to be more careful than solid foods, for instance. Uh, then it would basically ask for a confirmation if the driver is ready. And if the if there was no answer or if the answer was no, it would wait, you know, 20 seconds or so, and then it would ask again. Uh, we determined that after about three times of either no answer or saying no, we would send out an employee just to make sure everything was okay or if the driver was still there, you know, whatever it may be. And... Um, yeah, we had, like I mentioned earlier, we had labels on the bags to determine if it was like soup, solid, drinks, whatever it was. And so there would be a scanner that would scan in the label and then automatically program the launcher to do uh, like the light, slow movements or, you know, a big arc that was nice and fast into the window, whatever it had to be. And... um Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's it's broken down a lot more here. Like, I have tons of steps here, but it's really just broken down to be in the machine language is what I have. But you get the basic concept of it. Um, we do have scanners for in case there's poor weather. You know, if there's... We live in Florida, right? Or, I mean, a majority of us do. We have hurricanes here all the time. So if there's a hurricane going on, tropical storm, whatever, we can actually program it so the launchers can aim for uh, windage. And uh, that's pretty much it for the task. Excellent. Do we have Vanessa back yet? Yes. Hello, I'm back. Um, my screen froze and then it kicked me out. <laughs> Not a problem, Vanessa. So let's do the user story scribe part. Can we do that? Okay. Um, there we go. Thank you. Um, uh, okay. So I'm Vanessa and I was the user story scribe and we all came together and just collected a series of questions for the user to better optimize the food chucker. So how many lanes will be available for drive through? If there is more than one lane, how many of these lanes will be able to have their food chuck? There will be two lanes. The food chucker will be able to service both lanes. What type of vehicles will not be able to have their food chucked? Is this because they're too high or too low? Large commercial trucks will not fit into lanes and cannot have their food chucked. Motorcycles can have their food chucked 
and should have special have a special window size. Other large vehicles can use a lane without an awning. Based on the size of their vehicle, the system will know what size of bags will pass through the window. Based on the type of food ordered, will the more fragile items like soup or liquid be chucked or will they be placed in special containers to prevent spilling? Um, all, food all food types can be chucked. Assume liquid is in sealed in airtight containers to prevent spillage. Just be careful to set uh, set them as gently as possible into the bags to not rupture. What is the maximum size? What is the maximum weight per bag of food? Items should not be mixed, only two items per bag. The customer will be notified of the weight of each bag and the speed of the bag coming in. Depending on what was ordered, the food can be hot or cold. What precautions can be taken to ensure the hot food does not burn the customer? If the food is hotter than, a nor than normal, a special thermal bag must be used. The driver must be notified that the hot food is being chucked. Um, uh, hold on, I can't really see that. Oh, there it is. Um, how will weather affect food chucking? Will there be an awning or... Wait, uh, go back, thank you. Uh, will there be an awning or a special type of roof that co covers the car? when they drive in to their spot, or they're not, will lanes not be so able for use during bad weather? For bad weather, an employee must be used to deliver the food. All drivers will be notified when an employee is sent out to their vehicle. Next slide. Um, what happens when food is ready to be chucked, but the driver never responds yes? Does the system repeat itself after a certain number of seconds, or does it signal to an employee to intervene? The system will repeat itself after 10 seconds. If there is no response, an employee will be sent out with the food. Is there a cool down time on each chucker after a customer has driven away? Yes, the chucker will have a 20 second cool down time before it begins chucking another slash new customer's food. How will the chucker regulate itself to aim at the correct height for each vehicle? Vehicles can either be sedans, mid, lower mid, vans, mid, trucks, high, or Motorcycles low. If there is, <laughs> these are a lot of questions. If there is more than one food checker, how will they be regulated? How will they be active? Will they be active at more than one time, even though the lanes are empty? Only one checker will be active at a time. If there are two drivers in each lane waiting food at the same time, then one checker will be on wait mode while the other checker has finished a customer's order. Besides containers, how will bags be sealed to prevent containers within from opening when chucked? The bags will be sealed by the restaurant. All bags will be doubled and the top of the bag will be folded and then taped down to ensure no food accidentally spills out. Is there a limitation on how many bags can be chucked per customer? No, all ba bags will continue to be chucked until the order to till the customer's order has been fulfilled. They will also be notified of how many bags to be to be, to expect. How far apart will the chuckers be placed from one another to prevent them from clashing together? Each chucker will be set up for a certain parking spot. Next slide, please. When a vehicle dries up, is there any other way? Is there any way that a tinted window will not read the chuck will not read to the chucker, or does that not matter at all? The driver can manually alert the chucker they have arrived and are ready. What should the customer be expected to do when they, before they get their food chucked? They will be asked to put their vehicle in park to prevent any unintended accidents and to roll down their window. What happens if a customer receives the wrong order? After the last bag of food is delivered, the system will ask the customer to quickly review this receipt attached to the bags. If there is no problems with the order, the customer can say no problems and drive away. If there is a problem, the customer has 30 seconds to tell the system wrong order. In that case, an employee will be sent out to collect the wrong order and the correct order will be chucked to the customer. Uh, and I'm finished. <laughs> All right, um, Arjun said that he needed to restart uh, Teams really quick to get his mic to work. 
Uh, he's the next one up. So the presentation is going to go down for a second. Should we just move on to your tester? I mean, as long as you don't mind there being no presentation. Uh, that's fine. If you got a tester who has something to tell us, go for it. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm the tester as well, John again. So uh, we had three phases of testing. Uh, before phase, we had phase zero, phase one, and phase two. Um, before phase zero, it would basically just be testing to see if the aiming systems are working properly, um, how the weather is going to affect them, and how that's going to affect the actual code for the aiming. Uh, if the physical buttons are going to be working or not for the for when a driver can't physically speak. And if the speakers are working for employees to be able to talk to uh, the drivers and for the voice recognition to work. And then heading into phase zero, we'll be testing out. Uh, we'll be monitoring what happens in phase zero and also testing what's going to be going into phase one. It'll just be the timers for when the drivers are saying, no, we're not ready or uh, no, there's a problem, as in the it's going to have to ask them after about 20 seconds again. So we're seeing if the timers are now working. We're going to see if the menu boards are clearly visible to the drivers and make, making sure that they don't get in the way for any of the aiming of the actual chuckers themselves. And then we're also making sure that the vehicle scanners and detectors are working as well. And then into phase one now, we're going to be testing out uh, the two lanes. So now we have more than one lane open. We're going to be up to more functionality. And um, lane one will be fully open for businesses and then lane two will still be in more of a testing phase so only like a few cars per hour or such and then uh once we're in phase two that'll be like the full rollout of the system and aiming and everything and that'll just be pretty much where employees are monitoring the system now and making sure that everything is running well possibly uh making a note in case something goes wrong, in case there has to be future updates done to whether it be the aiming or the voice recognition, whatever it may be. And that's all for the tester. Excellent. Very good. Did we get uh, Arjun back? Also, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go for it. Oh, I'm the coordinator. So... For the excellent productivity and the causative, there are going to be like three phases for food checking. The phase zero, in phase zero, the food checking service are limited. For instance, when the customers are at the service window, there is no like no alert system. Therefore, the employee must frequently keep an eye on the window or the camera for the customer presence. And the next phase one, the phase one is advanced form of the phase zero uh, lane open 24 7 and provides the food checkers all, all the time without any delay fast crystal clear transaction and reality peace of mind the phase one helps maximize the speed and uh, performance keeping the cars moving through and coming back again and again and the phase one has uh, the all the facility like vegetation drive through speakers vehicle loopholes, uh, speed service, timer, etc. In phase uh, two, the link only opens on some occasion and provide the same quality of the food checker service of, of phase one. In other words, the phase one uh, opens every day on peak hours and close non-hours and is more efficient and provide quality and 
and food changing. Yeah, that's it. Excellent. Good job, guys. You did a very, very good job. So, um, you caught my attention right off the bat when you pointed out. Uh, well, so your system seems really good. I mean, it determines that the car is in place, fantastic and wonderful. Determines that the window's been rolled down, all that sort of stuff like that. I just want to ask you: Do you think that it, you need to have like a human in the loop here? Because you know, somebody could uh, roll down the window and they could be like looking at the passenger or grabbing something off the floor when like stuff starts getting chucked into their car, right? Whack them in the side of the head. So do you think you actually have to have a person maybe push a button to like start the system as opposed to having it just be all automated? Or what do you think? Um, we do have buttons in place for manual launching and manual receiving. Okay. So, so yeah, that that is there, that is in place. That was actually in case uh, voice recognition wasn't working or something else was going wrong with the system, but it could be used for that too. Gotcha. But uh, you also plan on supporting uh, motorcycles, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's just, that's like, catch it. <laughs> Here it comes. All right. All right. No, that's cool. That works. I, nothing says you can't do that. So, okay. Well, good job, guys. You did a very good job. Thank you very much. All right. That concludes our in-class presentations. Once again, everyone, thank you very much. Everyone who presented tonight, you guys did a great job. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. So where do we stand now? Well, we've got uh, class on Thursday. We're going to spend that class reviewing for the final, which seems like probably a pretty good thing to do. And then next Tuesday at our standard class time, the actual final will become available online, just like in the midterm. Just sign on, do it. And I believe for the final exam, you guys get two hours. You will have two hours to complete the final exam. So uh, I think those are the next two things. So we've got the review class on Thursday, and you guys get to take the final exam on Tuesday. And then we are done, done, done. So that's fantastic. If there's any homeworks or anything you haven't turned in, get them in because we're just about ready to drop the ball and not accept any new stuff being turned in. So make sure that you turn it in if you got it. And make sure, even if it's not done, turn it in because it's always better to get partial credit than no credit at all. All right, that's it for tonight, guys. Thank you so much for showing up. I greatly appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you guys on Thursday. As always, as the world goes upside down, stay safe, wash your hands, wear your face mask, stay away from people. And I will see you in class on Thursday. See you then.